What's up guys, welcome back to another build video. In today's video, we're gonna be building a helmet mount for our vehicle. We're also gonna be doing a giveaway. I just hit 70,000 subscribers, which I'm super thankful for. And I've paired up with Kutek. We're gonna be giving away four Kutek hammocks and one of the three hammock mounts that I built. I'll have more information about the giveaway at the end of this video and the links will be down in the description. Now this whole project started when I thought I had an original idea for this hammock mount until I started Googling and was like, dang it, this already exists. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I just picked a design that I thought I could replicate pretty cheaply. This is something we do from time to time on this channel. We have the Prince suit roof rack, the Gobi ladder. We've got three different rooftop tent builds. So today we're gonna to be replicating a McLean Metalworks bare bones hammock mount. We're also gonna be replicating their tire mount. That way if you don't have a hitch receiver, you can just plug into the tire mount and you're good to go. I'll have their website linked in the description below. But I will say, I did make some modifications and some accessories for my hammock mount. That you're going to want to check out this was supposed to just be one video but i kept getting new ideas and kept building so i spent the last two months building just about every hammock mount that you can build for your vehicle so be sure to subscribe got two more videos coming after this one so let's head back to the shop and get started on this build all right so this is pretty much everything that you're going to need for this portion of the build i got the pipe at lowe's this is not conduit this is actually threaded water pipe found in the plumbing department and then I got this hitch adapter at Harbor Freight. I spent probably about 120 total on this, not including the hammock. Although the hammock was pretty cheap as well. So what we've got here is we have five sections of pipe here. They're all 30 inches long. We've got two pieces that are three quarters of an inch. We have two pieces that are one inch. And then we have this one piece that is an inch and a quarter. And then you're going to need two additional pieces that are at least four inches. Uh, and these are inch and a quarter as well. So these are the same size as this. But I already had these pieces laying around. So this is what I went with. But you could just buy a longer piece and then cut just four inch sections off of this guy here. Um, and then this is a two inch to one and a quarter uh, adapter I got at Harbor Freight for like 14 bucks. Um, we're going to end up cutting the adapter part off of it. So basically what you really need is some two inch square tubing, three sixteenths of an inch thick, uh, maybe like eight inches long or so. This is going to go in our hitch here. And it's also going to go in our tire mount that we're going to build later on. So either way, you're going to need a, a two inch piece of pipe. I'll show you how I mock this up to get my links and then we're going to get in the shop and get all these pieces cut to cut the length and get ready to start welding this stuff up. Alright, this is how I have everything mocked up. I actually did this in the aisle at Lowe's. I took my hammock with me. I laid everything out in the plumbing section and uh, just to figure out what length sections I need. That's how I came up with the 30 inch sections here. And I think this will get me in the ballpark. And if I feel like I need any more length, I can just swap one of these two out for a longer pole and uh, to, to get the perfect length for my my hammock but I think this will get me in the ballpark all right so now that I have all this figured out I'm gonna take all my pieces in the shop get the threads cut off get everything cleaned up and uh, get this thing ready to weld up one thing to keep in mind is we're gonna be using the three quarter inch pieces to go inside of the one inch pieces but there's a weld seam inside these pieces so it doesn't go in more than like an inch or two and we need to go in about four inches um, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to sand down that weld on the inside which is kind of a pain so if you don't want to have to do that what you could do is just buy two one inch pieces and then two one and a quarter inch pieces because these two fit inside of each other without any problem at all um, so if you don't want to deal with that just bump up the sizes a bit so yeah let's get these in the shop and get everything cut down and for anybody that's wondered hey man where you been you haven't uploaded in a while well here's the reason right here I've been building four massive tables. These are for a brewery that's opening up here in town. And I'm just about finished with these, but these things are absolutely massive. Three inch tops, two inch legs, so heavy. They're probably 500 pounds or more. So yeah, this is what I've been up to for the last couple months. I'm ready to get back to the videos. But man, these things have just taken up all my shop space. I hadn't really been able to do much else. But yeah, happy with the way these have turned out. All right, guys, let's quickly talk about this video sponsor, Kutek, because without them, we wouldn't be doing this awesome giveaway. Now, if you're thinking, oh, he got that sweet sponsorship money, and that's why he's building these random hammock mounts, you could not be further from the truth. I was building these random hammock mounts all on my own. I was about 80% done before Kutek just happened to randomly email me. 
they had no clue I was doing this project. I haven't shared it or posted it on social media or anything like that. So yeah, when they emailed me, I responded, the timing could not be more perfect. And they sent me four of their hammocks. Now I'm saying sponsorship lightly. They did not pay me at all to be featured on this channel. They just sent me over their products, which I'm gonna give right back to you guys. I'll have a link for the giveaway in the description below. All right, about their hammocks. These guys seem really solid from what I can tell. Really good quality. They're very lightweight, very strong. I think these are rated for about 500 pounds and they come with everything you need. So in the little side pouch, you got your two tree straps. It comes with two carabiners and then the hammock is just inside the side bag. They come in singles and double sizes so you can fit two people. They have a bunch of different colors to choose from. They also have some with mosquito netting if you want that. They seem like really solid hammocks, really good quality fabric and stitching. So if you're behind your vehicle or beside your vehicle or above your vehicle, and if you have to be between two trees, get a Kutek. So go check them out. I'll have everything linked in the description below. Also sign up for the giveaway. We're giving four of these away. One of those winners is gonna win one of the hammock mounts that I've built. Let's get back to the build. All right. We really don't have much to do here. We're basically just gonna cut off some of the threads. We don't need those. And we're also going to uh, cut down our hitch adapter. Like I said, we're gonna take off this, this portion of the hitch adapter. We don't need that. So yeah. Here I'm using an Evolution dry cut saw blade on my abrasive saw. I find this works really well as long as you don't let the blade speed up. You got to get into the cut really quickly, otherwise you'll destroy the blade. But if you don't have one of these, an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel will work just fine. All right, we have all of our threaded pieces cut off. The cold cut saw makes really quick work of that. So the next thing we need to do, I need to cut some rings off because these three quarter inch pieces are going to be put inside uh, the one inch pieces. And I need them to stop at about four inches deep. So we'll cut some rings from this guy. We'll weld them to here. That way it's a, you know, it's a stopper. And the same will go for these guys. They need a stopper as well because they'll be inserted in here. And um, so we'll cut a ring off here, weld it to this guy so that when those are inserted, they'll stop right about there. All right, here's that weld seam I was telling you guys about on the one inch pipe. It's right there, small little thing that runs the full length of the pipe. So that when we put our three quarter inch pipe, if we try to put it inside of it, you can see how close of a fit that is. And the only thing from preventing it from going in is that little weld seam right there. So what we're gonna do, got this guy from Harbor Freight. It's like a $35 tool, well worth it. We're gonna use this, grind that weld seam out of there. And then uh, this should fit and telescope inside of it just fine. And this should fit perfect. That's perfect. That's going to be our little stopper right there. We'll weld that in place so it can't go any further. That's perfect. But before we get these rings welded on, we gotta do one other thing. I need to notch out this hitch so that it fits uh, this inch and a quarter pipe. It's gonna be welded on right there in the center. Uh, but as you can see, there's a ton of gap right there causing that wobble. So we're gonna notch that out with the angle grinder. We'll just cut a curve so it fits those contours just nicely. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So we're going to cut that out real quick with the uh, angle grinder. All right, check it out. This is proof that tube notchers are, in my opinion, a little overrated. Look at that fit. It probably would have taken me almost just as long to set up a tube notcher as it did cut 
cutting this out with the angle grinder and that is a near perfect fit doesn't get much better than that but yeah that's why I don't have a tube notcher because I don't need one all right now I just want to make sure that I'll be able to weld it up nice and square It's actually pretty close. That looks really good. Sweet. Now we can start welding all this stuff up. All right, the last thing we need to do before we start welding things up, we need to figure out the angle that we're gonna weld these two short four inch pieces to our main piece. So these guys are gonna sit just like that on either side and uh, I've got everything mocked up how I want it so we have the hammock stretched straight out and I've already figured out these angles I'm just using a cheap Harbor Freight angle finder to figure out the angles here it's pretty simple right now it looks like 145 degrees is going to be perfect so I'll mark on each side this angle right along here with the sharpie we'll cut it out and then just like our other piece, we'll notch our main tube out so that it fits these pieces perfectly. All right, I just finished marking those 140 degree angles on each side of my inch and a quarter pipe. But before you mark those, you need a reference mark. That way the angles aren't slightly off on this plane. So what I like to do is if you look inside the pipe, you'll see the weld seam. It's a straight line that's going to run the full length. So I marked here and here, and that way I know that this is straight and, and uh, lined up. So that when I went to mark my lines, I made sure that this is straight up and down perfectly. And I marked on both sides. And now I know that those two angles aren't going to be slightly off. If you don't have a reference to go off of, you're everything is going to be off so uh, just kind of keep that in mind it'll help to make sure that you get a really nice cut perfect sweet let's cut the other side all right i just did a little bit of grinding off camera took a little bit off here and then here rounded that in there and this is a lot better than it was. I felt like I was about to start screwing things up, so I quit. But that's a lot better gap than it was before. Shortly after making these cuts, I found a website called Block Layer. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this website. But one thing that's really cool is that you can print out these templates. Use those templates on your pipe to be able to cut perfect notches. So we're going to go to pipe notching, make sure we're on inches. Then we're going to plug in all our data. We've got one one and a quarter parent tube, one and a quarter cut tube, wall thickness is about 0.125 which is eighth of an inch and then now we can change the angle of that cut tube. Once we have that we can print out this template, wrap it around our pipe and make perfect cuts so that the notches are near perfect. Just wanted to share this website. I thought this was really cool when I found this. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now that we got that, we're ready to start welding everything up. All right, before we weld this up, we want to make sure you remove the galvanized coating. I've already done it on this one. You can see how shiny it is. This Dello one still has the coating on it. Uh, it comes off pretty quick with some 100 grit sandpaper or your flap disc on your grinder. Um, you just don't want to weld through galvanized coating, and you definitely don't want to breathe the fumes that come off of it. It can make you sick. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and don't you know, hover over your fumes or anything. You're still going to have a galvanized coating on the inside that's going to start burning off. Um, but yeah, just don't breathe it. I've honestly never had a problem with it. Um, but I'm also not trying to breathe this stuff either. So just be careful with it. Alright, so these will weld on just like that. And then this guy will go, not, it won't be 90 degrees, it'll be kicked back a little bit so that the arms of the mount kind of go away from the vehicle. Uh, but right now I'm just going to tack everything in place very lightly. I want to go see how it looks uh, mounted to the vehicle. Make sure that the hammock is in the right, you know, right spot. Um, 
I think these angles are good, but I just want to double check. All right. Let's see how this thing looks. We don't have the arms welded up yet, but it'll be fine for now for this mock-up. Alright guys, check it out. I think this looks really good. The height's good. The distance from the vehicle is really good. I don't want to hit, I don't want to be touching the arms, the rails, once I get inside the, the hammock. I do have this hammock at like the narrowest setting possible uh, for this. I think it's perfect. So I wouldn't want to go any wider than this, honestly, with this setup. If you had a hammock that was wider than this, I would just do like arms that were, instead of 30 inch bars, I would do 36 inch lengths here. But I think this looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and test it out actually. I, I put a few more tacks in place, so I only have like four tack welds here, here and here. So I'm about to put like all my faith in these tack welds. But I think, uh, I think it'll work just fine. So let's test it out, see how it feels. Man, I hope this doesn't break. Easy on these tack welds. All right, my full weight is on the mount. That is awesome. All right, let's try it out. I hope I don't fall. Oh, this is this is so perfect. Not even touching the rail. Can even swing a little bit. This is awesome. I honestly thought that those welds were going to break when I got in this thing. I like to sit in mine like this a lot of times, so let's see if I can... Even sitting like this, I'm still not touching this rear bar, and I can still swing. This is awesome. I could not be more happy about this. This is perfect. We're ready to weld this thing up. Let's do it. Alright. Let's do this. I am happy with those wells. That looks really good. All right, y'all, check it out. Got it all welded up. I think it looks really good. These are honestly some of my best welds I've ever done on this channel, which I'm really happy about. Man, these Yes Welders make it so easy to make welds. We'll move on to the arms, get those little rings welded on, and we'll be ready to go. All right, we now have a stopper. I think that looks really good. Fits really nicely. I made a few modifications off camera that I wanna show you guys. The first being I finished the ends of the hammock mount. That way I can just clip into that and it looks a whole lot better. It's pretty easy to do. The second thing I did was I added this little foot pad to the left side of my mount. I have a ladder on the rear hatch of my third gen and that first rung is pretty high, so this is gonna act as that first step. It's actually really, really handy if I'm doing anything on top of the vehicle, you know, mounting my rooftop tent, need to get under there. It's just nice to have, a, you know, something to stand on. The third modification I made, I actually drilled and welded in a nut right there. And then on my drill press, I don't have a lathe, so I just chucked that up in my drill press, made this bolt right here. I got this idea from my Kuat roof rack and that way I can just bolt the main body of the, of the mount directly into my hitch receiver. That'll go like that. Cotter pin will pop in like that. I plan on just keeping it mounted to the Forerunner while I'm not running my trailer. That way I can take advantage of the little foot pad, 
and this thing's not going to be just rattling around all over the place. So I know some of those some of these mods aren't 100% necessary, but just wanted to share them. Do you like it? Yeah. All right, now that we have the main hammock mount built, we're gonna move on to building our tire mount. Basically the exact same tire mount that you can find at mcleanmetalworks.com. Uh, now, why would you wanna have a tire mount? Well, some vehicles don't even have a hitch receiver built into them at all. Uh, so if you don't have one, this will be a good option for you. Or if you're running a trailer and your hitch is being used, you're not gonna be able to use it there. So another good reason to have a, a tire mount. Now for this portion of the build, you're going to need about eight or nine feet of angle iron. I'm using two by two inch angle iron that's an eighth inch thick. And I'm also using this little ATV hitch adapter that I found at Harbor Freight. Uh, this was probably like, I don't know, 12 or $13. But I like finding stuff like this because it prevents you from having to go buy a much larger piece of metal and cut it all down. This is going to work absolutely perfectly. Um, so if you can find this, get it. And uh, we're basically just going to cut off like this hoop and maybe this tongue here. Um, so we're going to use that. But for the first portion of this, we're going to cut three pieces of angle iron. Two pieces that are 18 inches and one piece that's 12 inches. So let's get in the shop and I'll show you how we're going to put this together. we got our three pieces laid out how we want them. Um, and you can see we have these two big gaps because of this little inter interference here. So I'm going to cut an angle off of this so that that gap and that gap close up and then if you look up here we have another gap right here so i'll probably come across like that well we'll cut off about a half inch on this side and then come to this corner and we'll do the same on this side and that way we can weld all the way across this side and then up these two sides so that'll be nice and strong so i'm gonna get that cleaned up and then we'll start welding everything up all right we got everything trimmed up it's nice and flush there if you look up here straight across there one thing to note, when you go to cut this angle, it's the same here as it is right there because this is a parallelogram. I wish I'd been paying more attention in geometry class knowing that I'd be building stuff like this. But yeah, just wanted to point that out. I'm about to get this all welded up, but I think I'm gonna end up cutting out these slots here to this piece and then I'll cut down the center. That way they're not overlapping anywhere it's all just one solid piece and it'll just look a little nicer i also need to clean up this guy i don't need this hoop so i'll cut that off and then we'll shape this down i don't know if i'll just grind it down a little bit or try to cut all the way through there but i'll get it cleaned up All right, there we go. That didn't take any time at all. Now that we have this piece built, we're ready to put the piece on that's going to span the width of the tire. The easiest way, I think, to go about this would just be to cut a piece of angle iron that's the width of the tire that you're going to be mounting your, your mount up to. But I think I'm going to make mine adjustable, so I'll have two pieces that are similar size to this. They'll go across here and they'll overlap, and then they'll be able to go in and out depending on what, what tire I have it mounted to. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do, but if you want the easy way out, just do one piece across there and be done with it. All right, we've got our mount and then the two pieces that we cut. These end up being 16 inches a piece and they will go right here. And what I did with this piece, I've already got two marks on here. And basically one is for my Forerunner and the other one's for the Subaru. So it just shows how much they'll overlap. So for the Forerunner, we'll have about 24 and a quarter inches for that tire and then for the Subaru we'll slide it over and that will be about 19 inches and That's all we need for those tires. The cool thing is since they're 16 inches when this thing is in storage mode 
this will just fit right inside of here and it'll be packed away. This was uh, totally unintentional, but I'm glad it works out. That'll be really nice. So we'll have this plate welded to the back of our mount and then we'll have two studs coming out of the back of this like that. And then our two pieces of angle will have holes drilled along the back side and then we'll, they will go on top of those studs just like that. And then I'm either going to use some wing nuts or also these little star knobs. Got these off Amazon. Um, just to be able to take them on and off really easily. I think I'm just going to put that in right there. Just do two star knobs there and there. That shouldn't get in the way. And that'd be pretty easy. But if those don't work, I can just get um, some wing nuts. That way everything can disassemble and be taken off the vehicle uh, easily and stored. So yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this plate down and we'll get it welded to the mount. And we'll get those studs welded on. Now that I have those two drilled, I can plunge through my angle iron pieces. I have it clamped in two spots so it's nice and stable. It's all centered up with my marks that I made on this edge here. It's hard to see, but I've got center marked. So we're ready to drill through. All I did here was uh, cut the heads off these bolts to make these studs. And we'll just put them through the back and then weld it up and grind it back down. Alright, we got the studs welded in place here. We have the holes drilled in our angle iron. Check it out. We put the angle iron here. We got forerunner mode through these two holes. And then if we slide it over, we'll have Subaru mode through these two holes for the narrower tire. So let's get this in place. Oh, we just got so lucky. Check it out. This one is as tight as it can go, and it just happens to be in this space where this one can turn. This is totally unintentional, but I love when stuff like this works out. All right, last thing we need to do is we need to cut some slots in each end of our angle iron to hold the strap so it doesn't go flying off while we're sitting in this thing. So let's cut some slots. Our two slots cut. I think that looks really good. I filed and sanded down the edges so we don't have any sharp edges. I think this looks really nice. One thing that I added to this design that I thought was pretty trick was that since these fit inside here just like that, I added a little stud right there. So now these go on and then we can just grab one of the knobs from here thread it on. Now these pieces aren't coming out, not going to be rattling around or anything. I thought that was pretty cool. Alright, let's test out this tire mount. All 
All right, moment of truth. See how she does. Oh. Ah, dude. This is perfect. You can still swing without touching the rails. This is awesome. I actually like this a little bit better than being on the rear because uh, since you're on the tire, the suspension doesn't compress and you end up staying a little higher off the ground. All right, now that we know that works, we can finally get this thing painted. I have a few other accessories I want to build for this thing, and then we can wrap this one up. But I'm super excited about this project. This is awesome. All right, guys, let me show you the accessories I made for this. The hammock mount is pretty cool in and of itself, but I started thinking about it and was like, this thing really needs to have more utility than just a hammock mount. And that's where these accessories come in. But let me show you what I got. All right, so if we remove the support pole over here, this is what we got. I basically made it a little stool. I welded up this one inch pipe. I left the threads on this end, and then I added a key on this end. That way it can't pivot. I notched out this way so the key fits in the notch. I used a pipe flange on the bottom of the seat so this will just thread on. This slides in and now you have a stool. Spins around a little bit. So now we have a quick seat. For the other side, if we just remove this half of the support pole, we have a table. On this section of pipe, I added a key at the bottom here and then a notch at the top. So it's locked in down here at the bottom. I have a small piece of three quarter inch water pipe that I cut up and welded together. And we have the same key welded on the pipe and I have a threaded flange for the bottom. So we'll just screw that in place. So that locks in. Just like that. Now we have an area, this pivots. We have an area for food prep, cooking, whatever we need to do. And then we have a seat where we can just sit and chill. I thought these were pretty cool ideas. Let me know in the comment section what other accessories would be really cool to have with the hammock mount. Yeah, just wanted to share that. All right, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed this build. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I know this was a lot of welding and fabricating, but if you like DIY projects, I'd highly recommend it. Welding has become so much more affordable and it just opens so many doors. But remember, we have three more hammock mount builds to go, so I hope you guys stick around for that. And we're also doing a giveaway. I'm gonna do four drawings. Three people will win a Kutek hammock and the grand prize winner will win a Kutek hammock plus one of the hammock mounts that I built. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna give away yet. So I'll have the link for that in the description below. Be sure to sign up. Be sure to subscribe. I hope you all have enjoyed this one. I want to thank Kutek for sending over the hammocks and making this giveaway possible. And I also want to thank McLean Metalworks for designing a really cool product. When I was about halfway done building this hammock mount, I started thinking, why don't I just build a hammock mount into something that I already own? And that's when I realized I have this cheap Harbor Freight hitch rack. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to retrofit a hammock mount into this cheap hitch rack. So we'll see you guys in the next one.